For this week's video, I'll be reviewing the book on the top of the stack. It's a Revised Standard Version, 2nd Catholic Edition, from Ignatius. Uh, I also have here in the stack a 1st edition of the Revised Standard Version, Catholic Edition, also from Ignatius. Uh, a New Oxford Annotated Bible in the Revised Standard Version. And finally, the Didache Bible, which I reviewed about a year ago. So, let's take a look at size comparison. The Bible we'll be reviewing is taller, wider, and maybe a bit thinner than the first edition, Revised Standard Version, Catholic Edition, from Ignatius. A little taller, not much, and a little wider, but thinner than the New Oxford Annotated Bible in the Revised Standard Version. I understand from uh, some of the people who have com commented on my channel that my copy of the Didache Bible is thicker than some others, but uh, footprint-wise these two are very similar. The Bible we'll be reviewing is a thinner Bible, more portable. It is 9 and 3 eighths inches tall, 6 and 3 eighths inches wide, and 1 and 1 half inch thick. The yeah. text is in two columns in a paragraph format. Each column is about 64 millimeters wide. My guess is that there are about 52, 52 characters per line, and as many as 59 lines of text on the page. So on a page with no notes at the bottom of the column and no breaks like this, you can have as many as 50 line, 59 lines of text. Page dimensions are it's uh, 228 millimeters tall, 151 millimeters wide, that's 8.98 inches tall, almost 9 inches tall, 5.94 inches wide. The ink appears to me to be black, so this is not a gray ink that you sometimes find in Bibles these days. We'll let the motorcycle go away. Margins at the top are between eight and nine, eight and nine millimeters here. The bottom, nine to 10 millimeters. The inner margin can be as much as uh, 10 millimeters, but certainly in the center of the Bible, it's not quite that much. And you do have here with this Bible, a problem with the text curving into the spine. The outer margin is very narrow. It's only about six millimeters wide. The font here in the text is 9.5 points when I compare it to Times New Roman. The line height is about 10 points, so that's actually quite comfortable on the eye. I certainly think so. It's a pleasant reading experience. There are verse numbers in the text. They're quite easy to find. They're not bold, but they are raised text is not line matched. You may be able to see that here. You can see the text from the back side of this page and you can see that it's offset a bit. There are text and translation notes, references and explanatory notes on the lower right hand portion of most of the pages. So here um, you have text and translation notes here they're indicated by letters, so in verses above you'll see those letters and these are the notes that go with those indicators. And then for all of these verses there are references. They're just listed here in this column format, which leaves quite a lot of room over to the side, not used. And then finally you'll occasionally find an asterisk in the text and the asterisk has an explanatory note like that. So for these references, it's easy to actual, actually read it backwards, to go from the references back to the text. For these and for this, it's somewhat more difficult because you actually have to find them in the text to go backwards. The font here is about 6.5 points, and although it is quite small, I find it easy enough to read the paper, I measure the sheet thickness 
to be 48.7 micrometers and then I estimate, or estimate or perhaps uh, better stated as a guesstimate, uh, the paper weight to be 44.5 grams per square meter. Paper is non-glossy, at least it has a very light sheen to it. It's a beige, a light beige, it's certainly not white. There is significant show through. I think we've seen that when we looked at the line matching a moment ago. You can certainly see the chapter numeral from chapter 18 on the previous page. And yet it's not troublesome. Uh, I think that's because the paper is so thick and it's not as opaque as it could be, but it seems to be just opaque enough. There is print non-uniformity. It is uh, fairly common and it's easy to find. We'll show you a couple of pages simultaneously to give you a sense for about how extreme it is. It's not very bad. Here's a light page, 796. I'll pull over the top of that, page 802, which is fairly dark. And that gives you a sense, I think, for the range of darkness that you'll find in this Bible. You can also see a bit of a sheen right through here. Not too bad in terms of either the print non-uniformity or the glossiness of the paper. There are no book introductions. You see right here you're at the first book of Maccabees. Um, the book titles are typically the outside top of the page. The contents of the page are there as well, but you get only the chapter numbers. You get nothing in terms of the verses that are on those pages, so you don't see a range of verses there. Page numbers are at the bottom of the page in the center. There are headings in the text, and the headings in the text are in a sans serif font. It's very bold. Uh, the capitals here, I measured the capitals to be about 8.5 points. About the same size as an 8.5 point times New Roman. Chapter numbers, you see, are about two, page, uh, two lines tall, not two pages tall. And they're bold and they're very easy to find. The uh, books of the Bible all begin on a separate page, so if we go back and look at some of the small books at the end of the New Testament, we'll find that each one of them starts on a separate page. So here's 1 Peter. 2 Peter starts on its own page. 1 John. 2 John. 3 John. All separate pages, as is Jude in the book of Revelation. I really like the way they do the J in this font, too. I think that's attractive. Okay. Um, words of Christ are happily in black. So here we are looking through Luke. You would normally see a lot of red through here and a red letter Bible, but this is much easier to read because it's in a black font. Words added for clarity in the Revised Standard Version, and as far as I know, in none of its derivatives. Um, words added for clarity by the translators are not in italic font. So you can't actually tell by looking at this which words map to something in the original languages and which don't. So at the end of the text of the Bible, end of the book of Revelation, there is nothing except the maps. So there's no table of weights and measures, no concordance, no map index. You just come immediately to 15, mostly green, rather low detail maps like this. They span 16 pages. Uh, they are on a semi-gloss surface. I think you can pick up a little bit of sheen here and there, but it's not too bad. Fairly thick. It's certainly thicker than the Bible paper is. That was a truck, I think, that time. And I don't know if I mentioned, but the binding is sewn. You should be able to find, see the stitches here in the gutter between these two maps. 
here are the stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six lines of stitching here between the Holy Land and Palestine in the Greco-Roman period. There's a map that goes into the gutter. So of the maps that you have, only one of them actually goes into the gutter. And it doesn't seem that you lose any geographical territory, which is which is advantage. And Paul's journeys, the churches of the New Testament, the last map, and it's kind of glued to this one piece of pa paper that's, which is heavy, which has a textured feel that makes it feel a bit like fabric. We have uh, gilt page edges all around, and it's nicely done. It's not mirror-like, but it seems to be with, uh, with very few flaws. There are two red ribbon markers. Each of them is seven millimeters wide. They're shiny and smooth on both sides, and they are 320 millimeters long. I think they're long enough. You pull it out towards the corner, you have that much material left to, to grasp hold of between your thumb and your pointer finger. Um, burgundy had, burgundy and gold had intel bands. I like those as well. It, uh, we mentioned, I think it's a paper paste down. The paper has a texture to it. The cover is bonded leather. It reminds me a lot of the bonded leather on the NET Bible. And I have just left the sticker on here because I knew I would be reviewing the book at some point. And here's an easy way to transmit in the video itself the ISBN. And we said it was a sewn binding. I am not sure exactly why it won't lie flat. It could be the stiffness of these hinges. But either in the front or the back of the Bible, you can attempt to have it lie fat flat and it simply opens. We'll go to say, here we are, Genesis 34, I'm gonna let go. All right, so that doesn't work. And I've broken this book in three times at least. Here we are in Numbers, Numbers chapter six. I thought it was gonna hold that time. All right, so just barely at Numbers six, it'll, it will stay open. Looking at the front cover, one has uh, icons uh, representing Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John on the cover, and then Christ having the Bible open to John 8.12. And um, this is Jesus. Uh, it's the initial and final letters of Jesus, initial and final letters of Christ. The line over the top tells you that it's an abbreviation. The uh, main title page tells you that it's the Revised Standard Version, Cat Second Catholic Edition, and it uh, gives something of the genealogy. It says it's the version set forth in AD 1611, which of course is the King James Version, which itself was a revision of the Bishop's Bible, which goes back to Tyndall, Coverdale, and John Rogers, uh, Reformation heroes. Um, the Old New Testaments were revised uh, in 1881 to 1885 time frame. This was um, at the behest of the Convocation of the Church of England. So all these were Church of England Bibles prior to 1901. That was an American committee, so it was a mixed denominations, but that's the American Standard Version, compared with the most ancient authorities in 46 and 52. That's the first uh, New Testament and Old Testament dates for the Revised Standard Version. 1965 was the year that the work was done on the Catholic Revision, which changed the New Testament, but actually didn't alter the Old Testament text. And so in 1966, the first Catholic edition was published. This edition was revised according to uh, Liturgium Authenticum in 2001. Then on the next page, we'll get the actual date for the Revised Standard Version, Second Catholic Edition. Uh, we have ecclesiastical approval. Um, Nothing stands in the way, says Thomas Hanlon. Let it go forth, says Peter W. Bartholomew, Bishop of St. Cloud, Minnesota. 
So that's back for the first Catholic edition since the date 66. Then we have the copyright information in here. We have Revised Standard Version Ignatius Edition, copyright 2006. So that's the copyright date for the second Catholic edition. We have ISBNs. We have cover art by Pelicano. Cover design, maps we've seen by David Notley. And that's the end of that page. The next page is the introduction. This is the introduction to the 66 edition, so to the first Catholic edition. And it talks about how um, Protestants and Catholics alike all use the same critical editions. You know, Catholics have done so since the encyclical letter uh, Divino Afflante Spiritu in 1943. Um, goes on for several pages. They talk about how in the Apocrypha they're using uh, sometimes a shorter Greek text than the longer Latin text that you would have found in the Douay Reims Bible. They say things like a um, passage known as the Three Witnesses or the Comma Johannium, uh, which is in the Latin Vulgate and in versions based on it, does not appear in recent Catholic editions of the New Testament. This procedure is in, in accordance with the directives given in the same encyclical letter, but I don't understand that myself because the Council of Trent said that the Latin Vulgate was authentic and not to be refused, so I would use the authentic one. I wouldn't use the guesswork of modern scholarship. Just my opinion. Abbreviations for the books of the Bible. Get that in two columns. Old Testament, and again, that very attractive font. I really like that, the way that looks. And you have a table of contents for the Old Testament. The reason you have a separate table of contents here, I think, is because the Old Testament and the New Testament were originally published separately. And then we come to the book of Genesis with your various notes down here in the lower right hand corner so just take advantage of this fact that we can find this A so easily to show you that in the beginning God created and then there's an asterisk here as well and so we'll look down here and they say so this is a translation note A says or when God began to create and then asterisk is a note about how the narrative should not be interpreted as a scientific picture, but to teach religious truth. Now I have the book up on a stand so that we can take a close look at this font. We mentioned earlier that the capitals, the height of the capitals was about a point or half a point at least uh, smaller than the line height. And whenever that happens, it actually looks quite pleasant to the eye. This does to me. Um, the font is not quite as bold as I would have liked, but it's perfectly readable. The um, tracking seems a little close in places, but it's not troublesome. And so I, I find it to be an attractive font. Now I want to show you the uh, same spot in the first Catholic edition, and we might have to zoom out a bit to do that well so that you can see one of the major changes, I think probably the most significant difference between the uh, first and the second Catholic editions. If we can move over a little bit too. Is, uh, in the first Catholic edition, because it's based on the initial Revised Standard Version, it used the archaic pronouns. So it says, to thee, O Lord, I lift up my soul, rather than to you, O Lord. Um, the font here in my copy, my paperback copy, which by the way is a sewn paperback, is actually a darker font. And um, it has a bit of a problem with the line spacing being too tight. I like the darkness here, but I do not like that line spacing as well. So again, the major difference, I think, between the second, second and the first Catholic editions is that in the Old Testament, they've gotten rid of the 
more archaic language, so you won't see the est and eth verb endings, and you won't see the thines and the these and the yees. Now here I have uh, the book we're, we're, we are reviewing is on the left, and on the right is the Didache Bible and the RSV 2CE. And I think I, th I think the thing that's most obvious immediately is that the Didache Bible is on white paper and not the beige paper on the left. The Decay Bible is printed nicely. It has a larger font. Line spacing there is quite nice. And the tracking is good as well. So the advantage to the book on the left really comes down to portability. Because on the, the one on the right I think has a more pleasant a general sense, general feel to it. Now I have the new Oxford Annotated Bible in the Revised Standard Version on the right and um, our Ignatius Revised Standard Version 2nd Catholic, Catholic Edition on the left. And again, I think the case is pretty much as it was with the Didache Bible, although I don't think this font is quite as nicely done as in the Didache Bible. But it's uh, larger, a bit easier to read on the right, although there is a, something of a show-through problem, I think, on the right. If you have a copy of the Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition and you don't know whether it's the first or the second, an easy way to find out is to check here. I'm looking in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, and it reads, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And beside virgin, virgin is in the text, there is a uh, indicator to a footnote, footnote I, and also an asterisk. And if we look down below at footnote I, we'll say, see that it says, or young woman. So that word in the text is virgin or young woman. And then there's an asterisk talking about the issue of whether it's virgin or young woman. You have virgin here in the text. In the second Catholic edition. I'm going to zoom out a bit and bring in the first Catholic edition at the same spot. Let's see if we can focus. Okay, so here it is. Behold, a young woman shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. So young woman is in the text. And then if we go down below to the relevant footnote, it says, or virgin, and then there is no note here that, dis that discusses whether virgin or young woman is the proper thing to put in the text. So if you have virgin in text, you have the second Catholic edition. As we did our overview earlier, I mentioned that the text has this tendency to fall away down into the gutter. The page just curls. It does not lie flat here in the center, and so as you're trying to read it, um, if you're an older person, that may cause some trouble because it tends to fall away in the gutter. But the way to deal with that, of course, is to pull the Bible flat so that you can see into there, and with, with the tension applied to the page, you can get it relatively flat, but you essentially have to read it two-handed and apply the tension to flatten out the page. I want to point out that um, the notes here in the Second Catholic Edition in the Old Testament, although the Old Testament was changed um, quite a bit by getting rid of the archaic language, the Old Testament notes seem to be very close to those that were in the first Catholic edition. So here I'm looking at the note to the Book of Wisdom. And it begins by saying that the book describes the part that wisdom plays in the life and destiny of man and ends with, and hence it was natural to attribute the book to him, that is to Solomon. Then if you look in the... Um, notes in the first Catholic edition. In my particular copy, they are in appendices. They're not at the bottom of the page, but you can look back to an appendix to the Old Testament and an appendix to the New Testament and find them. 
It says uh, the book describes the part that wisdom plays in the life and destiny of men, etc. And then it ends with, hence it was natural to attribute the book uh, to him, that is to Solomon. Well, we're about ready for the summary. Um, I think it's a very good Bible for the price. It, uh, it gives you a bonded leather cover that's a fairly decent bonded leather. It has some flexibility to it. Um, you get gilt edges, two ribbon markers. It's uh, fairly nicely printed. I like the beige behind the black. Uh, something about that combination I, th I find attractive and easy on the eye. Um, references, uh, when they exist, are down at the bottom of the page, and I prefer them to be closer to the text. But you can't have everything. Um, nice, easy to read uh, and spot chapter numbers and headings in the text. Columns are a bit wide, and I think the central issue with the Bible is the fact that to get the pages flat, you really have to use both hands to pull them apart and sort of contort the Bible the way you'd like to read it. The Revised Standard Version is a, a good translation. It is uh, not as literal as some, but not nearly as loose as others like the Jerusalem Bible and the New Jerusalem Bible are. Um, so I, I think altogether this is a, is a very good book, very well made. Uh, for the price, uh, it's an excellent Bible. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, if you did, please remember to hit the like button. If you haven't already done so and feel so inclined, uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for your time.